This video is all about leaked specifications for the upcoming much anticipated Canon EOS R6 Mark II. And I've got five additional capabilities over the ones I put in a video just a few days ago. So what are they? Do we have a date? Do we have a time? Details coming up. But first, I encourage you to subscribe and choose all notifications so you're kept informed on the latest camera gear, news, and rumors. Thanks to Canon Rumors, once again, we have confirmation on five new capabilities for the Canon EOS R6 Mark II. And this is in addition to the capabilities that I reported on just a couple of days ago. Some of these are first-time features to a Canon camera. Are they enough to get you on board? Well, let's have a look. First, let's take a look at the capabilities I reported on just a couple of days ago. And if you want to skip these and go right to the new ones, well, you can just use the chapters navigated down below and that you can jump right to that skipping over this old stuff. But what's interesting about that sensor, that 24 megapixel sensor, is while it's an upgrade over the 20 megapixel sensor in the Canon EOS R6, it's not by a huge amount. Yes, it's 20, 25%, but it's not as much as many of you would have hoped. But again, remember, it's rumored that this 24 megapixel sensor is the one coming from the R3, which is a stacked BSI sensor, which would dramatically increase the amount of performance. And I know 24 isn't huge, and personally myself, I'd like to see it right around 30.3 megapixels. I'd like to see it where the EOS R was, but that doesn't look like it's going to be the case. Now, in terms of the autofocus system in the Canon EOS R6 Mark II, dual pixel autofocus too. So it's gonna do all the same stuff that we can do right now. Bird eye detection, animal eye detection, pet dog eye detection. It's gonna be able to do subject detection, vehicle detection, torso detection. So it's got all that wonderful stuff that you kind of expect for in dual pixel autofocus. I don't know if it's gonna take into account further deep learning or any improvements there that we saw with the 1DX Mark III but the autofocus system for Canon is pretty good. And the camera does have five axis IBIS. I assume it's gonna be around five to 5.5 stops. Now let's take a look at the video modes. 4K, 24, 25, and 30 frames per second. And that's uncropped, but is it oversampled? And this being a 24 megapixel censored camera, I really expect that we're gonna get 6K oversampled 4K. I think it's a safe bet. Look. I know you're thinking about that cripple hammer, but let, let's go back to a couple of cameras that just came out a little while ago. The R7, 7K over sample 4K. And I know that's around $1,500, but at $979, the Canon EOS R10 does 6K over sample 4K. So even in a cheaper camera, which I believe also has, what, 24 megapixels? We've got 6K over sample 4K. So I think it's a pretty foregone conclusion that we're going to get 6K oversampled 4K in this camera at 24, 25, and 30 frames per second. Of course, it's uncropped because that's what oversampled is. It's going to be full sensor readout. And while this camera can do 50 and 60 frames per second, it does have a crop. Now on the R6, it's a 1.1 times crop. So will that carry over here? Really don't know. If we are getting the same sensor that we're getting in the, um, oh, what was it called? The R3. See, I'm already starting to lose it. It's really late here at night. If we're getting the same sensor that we find in the R3, well, that will help with performance. And of course, if we're gonna get that Digic X image processor, which makes a lot of sense, unless of course, Canon's come up with another processor, uh, we'll call it the Digic 11, but there's no rumors of a new processor at this point. I think if we're gonna see a new processor, I wouldn't be surprised to see that debut in a camera such as the Canon EOS R1. And we probably will start to hear about that camera um, probably around February or March of 2023. It's really nice to know that right off the bat, we'll get Canon Log 3 and HDRPQ. We'll also get dual card slots, but these, despite rumors that the R8 would get one CF Express card slot, the R6 Mark II is gonna get dual UHS-2 card slots. So SD card slots, so you can put a V30, V60, or a V90 in there. And based on the maximum sustained write speeds of some of these Angelbird SD cards, their V60s will sustain a maximum write speed of 140 megabytes per second. That's pretty amazing. And it's a pretty reasonable price too. I think the one terabyte is around $299. You can go V90, which really jacks that up to around 260 megabytes per second, but you're gonna pay an awful lot more. I think that's around 599 for 512 megabytes. So while you're still stuck with dual UHS-2 card slots, you can definitely really ramp up the speed with these new SD cards. I should have mentioned continuous shooting right when I was talking about the image processor and the sensor. The Canon EOS R6 Mark II can do 12 frames per second mechanical. And I know what you're thinking. If I spend a whole lot less, $979 and get the R10, it can do 15 frames per second mechanical and 23 frames per second electronic. The R7, which costs a little bit more, 
Well, it can do 15 frames per second mechanical and 30 frames per second electronic. So the R6 Mark II with 12 frames per second mechanical doesn't seem all that fast, but that's what we get in the R5 right now in the R6, both Mark I's. I, I think that's a pretty decent amount. I've never really had a problem with that. And when I wanted to shoot a whole lot faster, I just started using electronic. And this is where I think the R6 is gonna be able to shoot between 20 and 30 frames per second electronic. I know these numbers sound pretty much similar to the R7 and the R10, but if you hold down the shutter button on either of those two cameras, you're basically gonna get a second and that's it. And the buffer's gonna be slow to, well, clear everything out. On the R6 Mark II, you're gonna be able to hold down that shutter button for a whole lot longer, and the buffer's gonna clear out a whole lot longer. So it's not just specifications. We gotta look at the outcomes, and the R6 Mark II is gonna perform a whole lot better in those situations, and definitely better in low light. And now for the additional five capabilities that you, well, clicked on this video to watch. Four of them, I guarantee you, you've never heard before in a Canon camera. And uh, the first one is digital teleconverter. Interesting. Now, somebody mentioned this to me earlier today, and I just, you know, said, yeah, I'm, I don't know. I, I always prefer optical, not really thinking about what that actually means, but digital teleconverter. And the next one is cloud raw processing. Now, does this mean you're going to be able to automatically, while you're in the field, be able to upload raw photos and other things to Canon's cloud service and have it automatically edit those based on certain presets? Or is it just a capability that you're gonna be able to do when you take your camera back to the office, plug it in and upload the images to Canon's raw computing service? I don't really know. We don't really know too much at this point. I do know that this capability was hinted at about a year ago in Canon's new cloud service for professional users. So I can't wait to find out a little bit more about these. Sometimes when you're told about capabilities and they're completely new, you're kind of left scratching your head going, I'm wondering what this really means. And the next one, dual pixel raw, raw burst. Dual pixel raw, raw burst. I know how Canon's dual pixel autofocus works, and I'm wondering if it's just catching more information. So in post, we have the ability to adjust, to tweak how the autofocus system is actually working so we can tweak it and post if things become a little blurry if they don't quite snap on i'm not really sure but dual pixel raw raw burst is what they call it what do you think that one means i'm really i'm really curious about this one i think somebody who knows dual pixel autofocus a whole lot better at the um abstract level the um the chip level i'm i forgot there's a certain chip terminology i'm forgetting right now the substrate level I'm really curious it has to do with how the information is captured and if they're capturing more information for us that we can later better process as I tried to allude to just about 30 seconds ago. The other feature that I'm also a little bit unsure about is hybrid auto. That's right, hybrid auto. I mean, you can see the words right here. Does this relate to autofocus? Is this some sort of intelligent uh, machine learning type capability that will automatically select the best type of autofocus for us based on what we're shooting. I don't really know. I'm really curious about this. Or is it something related to auto exposure or auto metering or something all combined? Is it one of those entry level capabilities that's designed for people who aren't too familiar with how to use a camera that we see on more entry level cameras? Or is this more of a professional capability? It really got me on that one. And the last feature, I wouldn't really put this one in here, but um, Canon Rumors did, and that support of RF and RFS lenses. Yeah, I know. I mean, duh. Obviously, it's going to support RF lenses because the Canon R6 Mark II did as well. There's no way on earth Canon's going to come out with a completely new mount for this camera, but this is just verifying. We didn't know 100%. It's like saying we didn't know that Canon's going to make the internals and the chips and all that and assemble it together themselves, but... Um, so that is, that's another capability too that wasn't mentioned. So it's going to support RF and RFS lenses. So not a huge amount of information here, but these capabilities could be quite significant. Digital teleconverter, cloud raw processing, dual raw, sorry, let me try that again. Dual pixel raw, raw burst, hybrid auto, and of course support for RF and RFS lenses. I don't know. I get a sense that Canon's going to bring out additional technology advancements in this R6 camera, the R6 Mark II. I've seen an awful lot of comments. This video's done really well. I think in the first day it did, what, 12,000 views? A lot of people were kind of like, eh, you know, um, seems nice, but it's not a huge benefit over what I've got. Definitely give me all I. And Canon, if you're listening, and I know you are, please give us all I. Put that back. There's no reason why the R6 shouldn't have it, let alone the R6 Mark II. So give us all I. 
and also remove that 30 minute record limit. And I definitely think that 30 minute record limit is gone in the R6 Mark II. While we don't have confirmation, they took it away from the R7 and they took it away from the R10, which cost $979 body alone. So I can't see the 30 minute record limit still there. So 6K over sample, 4K without a record limit is really good. Some of these new capabilities, again, digital teleconverter, cloud raw processing, dual pixel raw and raw burst, as well as hybrid auto. Do they matter? Well, to me, it's not the specs that matter most of all, it's how it changes my workflow. And if these capabilities help us in our workflow, and again, this is coming out at a semi-pro level camera, the R6, which is essentially a 1DX Mark III, a mini 1DX Mark III when it comes to stills. Now, when it comes to video, the R6 really screwed up a lot of things. It could have been and should have been a whole lot better for $2,500. And I think the R6 Mark II is gonna correct a lot of that. Canon Log 3, HDR PQ, 6K over a sample 4K, uncropped at 24, 25, and 30 frames per second, which you would get with full sensor readout. And then you're gonna get a crop at 50 and 60 frames per second. And with that 30 minute record limit removed, that's gonna be a big deal. But I'm waiting for clarification on what these new capabilities mean because I'll be honest with you, I just don't know. And yes, I can guess and I can imagine I'll probably go to bed tonight, which won't be very long after you start watching this and think, yeah, hybrid auto. Of course, I'll probably think of something crazy. And dual pixel raw, I think I've got the gist of that in my mind and I'm just, for the life of me right now, at 10 o'clock at night, I just can't articulate what I'm trying to say, but I have a feeling it has to do with how all the information that's captured when dual pixel autofocus is working, but passing that some of that information along to us so we can adjust things in post. And how effective that will be, well, that remains to be seen. But some of these other capabilities, I'm really looking forward to it. I'm really looking forward to the R6 Mark II. We don't know the date, but what has me a little bit curious here is we just got some leaked specifications a couple of days ago. Now this is two weeks before Sony announces their A7R5. And today Sony released the ZV F1. I'm wondering if this is Canon's way of just leaking some information so that way can, they can take some of the news cycle back. They can take some news away from Sony. But what I tend to think is when we're getting validated rumors from multiple sources and we're getting a lot of detailed information here, it almost makes me believe it's getting leaked from Canon, their marketing team. When we get CR3s on a camera one day and then just two days later, we get another additional set of updates. It leads me to believe that this camera is closer than we might expect. I can't imagine it's gonna be coming out and being announced this month in, in October. I mean, it's possible. The likelihood of it happening in November, well, it's very unlikely and December's even more unlikely. So it'd most likely be October. And I just don't see that. Now, yes, Canon released the R3 with nobody really knowing about it. Canon rumors didn't know about it. Nobody knew about it until about six hours ahead of the announcement, or was it 12 hours? But the R3 was a complete surprise to everybody. And there is a chance that Canon is getting ready to announce the R6 Mark II, but the camera was released just two years ago, right? In July, it was available for sale on the 30th of July. And I think they announced it right around the 7th to the 9th. They announced the R6 and the R5 at the same time that would be two years. And for Canon, for a camera at this level, normally you're looking at about four years. And yes, some of the other cameras like the, the 90D, 80D, 70D, 60D, and so on, that was anywhere from two to three years normally. But I'd be surprised if we get it this year. But I'm, I'm just really curious because we're getting so many leaked specifications on the R6 Mark II. I'm gonna say that there's a very, very slim chance we might get an announcement this month because I'm just seeing so much chatter on this and it's a CR3, but I, I really expect it to come out next year. And if we're getting a lot right now, the, the most likely time frame for an announcement would be early January because the R1 isn't gonna be announced early off. And that's usually the one series cameras normally announced in January. So without that happening, we could see the R6 Mark II being announced as early as the second week of January all the way up to, well, May. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm really curious on this one here. This is just pure conjecture and speculation on my part. And remember, we're talking rumors here. 
Um, I know some of you, Mark, you're getting a little bit excited over these specifications thinking, oh, I'm not happy with this. Well, I've given you some more to chew on. And Mark, I'd really appreciate some of your thoughts on some of these capabilities such as digital teleconverter, cloud raw processing, dual pixel raw, raw burst, and hybrid auto and what they really mean for us. And if you want to stay up to date on the latest camera news and rumors, as you can see, I publish rumors and videos at any time of day. It's over 10 o'clock. It's past 10 o'clock at night now. We're now up to 1014. So I need to get this out to you. But if you want to stay up to date on the latest camera news and rumors, what I'm trying to say is please hit the subscribe button and then choose all notifications. By choosing all notifications, as soon as I publish a video like this one here, you'll get notified by YouTube. So that way you can stay up to date on the latest camera news and rumors. And if you're a busy person, you don't have to worry about following RSS feeds, Twitter feeds, all your favorite websites, all your favorite YouTube channels. Here at The Ordinary Filmmaker, I cover all the major brands, all the major cameras. So subscribe and choose all notifications so you can stay up to date on the latest camera news and rumors. That's it for now. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you again soon.